Good evening, everyone. Thank you for coming. Uh, it's a beautifully moderate day in Karachi today, but we can't really see because the screen's a little fuzzy. But it's representative of the air that we usually have around here. This is what it looks like more on a regular day. Again, you can't see any of that, but don't worry. We have uh, T2F organizers. Can you dim the lights, please, over here? Yeah, lights come, Karne. OK, so what we're looking at is a trash dump along uh, one of the major uh, roads. It's not a highway. It's just a road close to here, not even five minutes drive from here, uh, Kurangi Road. This trash run dump runs about a kilometer in length. And I happen to pass by it every day. And every day, it's smoldering away, causing air pollution. And that is what we're going to learn about today. What constitutes smog and air pollution? What are the health impacts? And what can I do to protect myself? So a little bit on um, how this journey started for me. The last, uh, last five years, I was living in Beijing, China. And Beijing is known to have some of the worst air quality in the world. And uh, so you know, while I was there, I learned a lot about how bad air is and what, what are the issues around air pollution, what are the impacts on uh, personal uh, lives that you have on a daily basis. So you know, after knowing a lot about it, I was like, hey, how is it looking like in uh, Karachi, my hometown? So about two years ago, I got one air quality monitor, uh, a small portable device. It's actually this one right here. And I took it around with me to Karachi and Lahore and to a few other places just to have an idea of what the air looks like. And I was surprised because, you know, like when you go outside like today, it looks like it's not a bad day. But actually, it is a pretty bad day. Not the worst days that we have, but it's, it's quite a day with poor air quality. So I was like, OK, that's interesting. How about data out there? So I went on the internet, and like everyone does, I googled uh, Pakistan air quality, and out came some results from the World Health Organization. You don't have to look at these charts. They're a bit complicated. But basically, I found that the air quality in Pakistan is pretty bad. Uh, the five cities for which data was available from the World Health Organization shows that we are amongst the worst 20 cities worldwide for poor air quality. But then I was like, hey, um, when is this data from? Because you know, when I was in Pakistan uh, the last time, like talking about two years ago, it didn't look as bad as these numbers are suggesting. So again, because of living in Beijing, I kind of have an idea of what to expect from the numbers. So I looked into the data and found out that for Karachi, there's about two weeks of data from 2008 and 2009, which the World Health Organization has been reporting every year up till 2016. So there's outdated information out there. And well, that's kind of where the journey end and, uh, but or w would have normally ended for most people. Except I was like, hey, you know, maybe I can do something about this because this is a very important issue. Let's um, start monitoring air quality in Pakistan. And that's how the Pakistan Air Quality Initiative came up, where I set up a bunch of air quality monitors in, in, in different cities. Uh, well, at least these cities are covered right now. But to go on with this is that, oh, there's another part of it. So like what I was saying, there's no data available. Pakistan Air Quality Initiative came out of that to uh, start generating data. OK. Now um, we move on to the more interesting part. People said make this uh, presentation should be multimedia. So we have not just this, there's a few other things happening. First, uh, I want to talk about PM 2.5. I have a sample of it over here, or a sample that uh, represents it. Because people always say, why are we only talking about PM 2.5 when we talk about air quality? Why don't we look at nitrogen and carbon and uh, ozone and all these other gases that people look at? So um, I'll get into why PM 2.5 is the critical indicator. But OK, this is uh, stuck in here. But OK, can, can you see what's inside? I'll show you a close up of it. So that's the human hair. And now I'm just trying to give you some perspective on what PM 2.5 is. Let's zoom into this hair over here. Um, that's a little bit bigger. And now we put a little PM 2.5 particle next to it. So you can hardly see the human hair that's inside, which I 
plucked off somebody's head just uh, half an hour back. Uh, but you can see that PM2.5 is really, really small stuff. What does it uh, comprise of? I hope this is the right chart. It, uh, well, you can't see it on that side. But it comprises of everything. We're talking about um, sulfates, nitrates, ammonium, uh, organic aerosols. Those are all gases. Those, in turn, comprise of all these like, chemical elements. It looks like a periodic table, which, is, uh, which it kind of is, because everything is in there. There's uh, heavy metals. There's uh, poisons like arsenic. There's um, sodium and magnesium and calcium. So it's like a, a chemical poison concoction in the air. It's deadly stuff. It's not just dust, as what a lot of uh, people think. Par uh, PM2.5, I didn't say what it is. It stands for particulate matter, which is smaller than that size that I was demonstrating. Now, um, why is PM2.5 so important? Again, because these little trace elements that you have in the air uh, enter your lungs. Let's open this chart up. Aha. So um, these elements, they go inside your lungs. We're also looking at bigger particles. Those are called uh, PM10, which are about five times bigger. Those get trapped uh, inside your, uh, basically, your throat. They don't like, make, it, make their way into the body. The finer particles, the PM2.5, go into your lungs. From your lungs, they enter into your bloodstream. So they actually get absorbed into, into what's it called? Uh, there's a particular vein, the pulmonary vein, from which they go into your, um, into your whole body. And they cause like respiratory issues like um, asthma. They cause cardiovascular issues. They can even cause cancer in the long term. So it's a pretty um, scary thing to have out there. So how does it look like in Pakistan? Um, the, in Pakistan, in the cities that we're measuring, it's up to f uh, from 4 to 12 times higher, the concentration of PM2.5, as compared to the safe limits that are set by the World Health Organization. Um, so imagine if you travel abroad, if you go to, I don't know, Berlin or Paris or New York, you're going to see uh, levels below 10. In Pakistan, they're 4 to 12 times more. In Lahore, what happened uh, last October, well, from October till November, December, and every year before that, was uh, we have what we're calling the smog season. It's up to 100 times higher at that time. So it's a pretty scary thing to have around you. So one thing that the Pakistan Air Quality Initiative is about is all about data. We're trying to provide inf data out there, which you can use to create awareness, to write in the media, to, to do various things, because that is what the vacuum was over here. So uh, let me show you how it looks like in Karachi. Um, so this is the, all the data that we have for Karachi. This is starting in uh, October 2016 over here. And then uh, it's all the way till this Sunday. Um, which was two days back. So red means it's unhealthy, purple means it's very unhealthy, green means it's moderate. So in the winter months, the air quality is always bad. I'll show you more of that because the d data can be quite uh, boring. So wh what was surprising is that the two peaks that we're seeing in the data, they're both around New Year. I don't know why. Because the very unhealthy is only happening over New Year. It's, it's like there's the same in uh, New Year 17 and New Year 2018. I don't know what's up with that, but that's why we need people to work on air quality. Now, uh, let me show you some other results for that. We have um, here the, I, I don't know if everyone can see this. Let me put this up there. Like I said, multimedia presentation. Uh, so this is what it looks like in Karachi from uh, well, January 2017 till again uh, this Sunday. Um, most of the year, it's moderate. So again, like you see in the chart during the summer months, the winter becomes uh, unhealthy. Uh, this is the only source of PM2.5 data that we have uh, right now in Karachi. The SIPA should be providing information. They haven't yet, but I'm confident they will be doing so soon. 
um, I'll get back into why this uh, chart is so important to look at, but I'll tell you what the Sindh Environmental Protection Agency is providing. They, in November, uh, thanks to a year of data by the Pakistan Air Quality Initiative, they also started publicly releasing some information on air quality. Uh, they don't do PM 2.5 data, but they are doing data on the gases and uh, PM 10. So even about uh, when you look at government data, everything seems to be in order. So it says here whether it's within safe limits and so on. So we're looking at ozone, um, sulfur dioxide, nitrogen dioxide, nitrogen oxide, carbon monoxide. Um, they're all within safe limits, except nitrogen oxides are a little above safe limits. But that being said about the data coming from the government, let me show you a little bit more about this. With uh, an example from Lahore. So here's what Lahore looks like. You don't have to see the chart, but you see there's a lot less green and a lot more red even hazardous in November. So Lahore is uh, seeing, I would say, what one should call an air quality crisis. With all this data, I think the, it's very difficult to kind of analyze and identify what do the numbers mean. So I'll tell you what the numbers mean. Again, there's a lot of charts. You're going to, uh, this is all going to be online on Facebook and Twitter, so you can see everything there. But Lahore has the worst air quality in Pakistan with 36 days with hazardous air pollution. Hazardous means that you should stay indoors, shut your doors and windows, wear a mask, turn on an air purifier, don't go outside, don't go to work, don't, go, don't send your kids to school. So th those are days which are really dangerous. And unhealthy is also similar. So in 2017, Karachi had all of four days with good air quality, which by good, I mean international standard good. The rest of the time, like moderate, like today. I mean, Karachi is moderate uh, most of the time, so it's not so bad. But let's just say the air quality isn't clean. What I don't understand, why the government is not able to do that much about it. So wait, we're, we're not going to talk about this one yet. I have to show you the next slide. It's on the thing, but you can't see it. So. Here, uh, coming back to the Lahore issue, here's the data that we have for Lahore coming from uh, our monitors there. So the air quality varies. This is, again, during the smog season when it was uh, critically bad. So the air goes up, uh, the air quality goes up, uh, and the two stations are kind of uh, tracing each other, very similar. 623 was the PM 2.5 concentration. Uh, people usually stop measuring it at 500 because they say it's so bad that it doesn't matter. Um, the peak that we recorded was a bit over 1,000 in this uh, time frame, but th these are the averages. When I look at the government data for the same uh, areas, um, their monitors, the green line is uh, the government data. It's uh, quite small, so you can't really see it. It looks like uh, everything's uh, pretty good. So. Uh, they, they have some data gaps, it's intermittent, I don't know why, but suddenly we see that one of their monitors, they have like six monitors, they keep changing location, one of their monitors starts being very similar to the data that the Pakistan Air Quality Initiative is providing, but most of them are not. Most of them look like a lower line where every day it looks good. So uh, there is need for independent um, verification of data that the government is providing. Um, the reason being, and the, probably the reason why it doesn't look so bad when you look at government data, because the Lahore High Court uh, is working on a smog policy, and one of the things they'll say, if the air quality crosses uh, maybe 200 or 300, then you have to keep cars off the road, uh, don't send your children to school, offices have to be shut down. So to prevent people from going outside and also creating more air pollution is part of it, but the other part is to protect your kids. Uh, they're talking about industry being shut down. So th that all is in the policy phase right now. It's not happened yet, but it'll soon happen. So air pollution is very complex. It's to do with uh, weather conditions, uh, like the uh, atmospheric conditions, what's the wind looking like, the pressure, temperature, uh, and uh, 
like you can't really measure or forecast air quality that easily. Well, you can measure it, but you can't forecast it. So anything can happen, and you can have air pollution also coming in from outside, like uh, we have air pollution coming in from the Sahara Desert into this part of the world. Um, and there are, but most of the air pollution in Pakistan is created locally. It's uh, by that motorcycle that you drove to get here. I don't know if you drove a motorcycle or if you take the public transport. Uh, it's nothing to do with the uh, Public Transport Association. This is all to do with government policy around having uh, vehicles which are clean and efficient, about having fuels that are good. It's about an uh, energy mix that is uh, positive uh, for the environment. But uh, the next map shows actually the question that you asked about uh, satellite data that one can look at for air quality. So you can see, well, in, in this case, so here's uh, Islamabad. Lahore is roughly around there. This is kind of along the Indus River, where you have a lot of agriculture. So even agriculture c creates uh, air pollution. In fact, the spikes in Lahore air pollution are part of it are due to uh, crop stubble burning that is happening. So. Uh, all over here, here's Karachi, which is another hotspot. These days you can't see it, but Gwadar over there is often also a hotspot for uh, poor air, thanks to all the construction activities that are happening over there. So, but when it comes to these sources, here's what we do know. Oh, this picture is from the same uh, garbage dump. There's also a picture from a few days ago. Um, it was a clear blue sky, though. Uh, so we know that majority of the pollutions are in Karachi caused by industrial emissions, 53%. Vehicles are smaller with 18%. Even uh, soil and road dust, which can also include things like construction dust, is 18%. And secondary emissions, I don't know what they mean. But uh, actually, all of this information is quite meaningless because it dates back to, again, uh, I think 2005 or so. I think they didn't like that number. But the, the point is that, uh, again, like many things, information is missing. We don't really know where air pollution is coming from. Is it uh, coming from the vehicles? I mean, has the energy, uh, the sources changed over the last 10, 12 years? Uh, which are the areas which are having the biggest impact on air pollution? What are the areas that we need to act on? So what I wanted to say, we, we'll do it without the projector, that Basically, smog in Pakistan is a public health emergency. Uh, it's an unrecognized problem. The media doesn't really talk about it. Uh, we don't really talk about it. We don't really know uh, about this. So uh, I'll tell you what used to happen in China. So when I was there in 2012, when the when New York Times kind of broke the story uh, about air pollution, and when I used to go around on the streets, like, you know, talk to people in my office or talk outside to a taxi driver or someone, a random person on the street, and I'd say, oh, look, it's a polluted day. They'd be like, oh, there's nothing to worry about. This is just the beautiful winter fog. Same as what they say in Lahore. Fast forward five years. Um, what happened now in, um, in China is that when you turn on the news, at the bottom you have a news sticker showing the air quality. When you look at the newspaper, you see air quality. Um, when you go outside, you know, you have the big electronic billboards. They're also reporting air quality. It's everywhere. It's all around you. And the, you know, like this has already started there two, three years ago. But what you see now when you look at papers about um, Beijing and what they've done for pollution in the last years, they've really cleaned up their act. 2017 has been one of the best years for air quality that they've seen in two decades. And air pollution is no longer the problem uh, that it used to be. But the, the point to add, the key, key point over here, that I see awareness about air pollution is kind of a silver lining. Because um, when you look at other sources of pollution, right? Like you hear of a dirty river, or you hear of a, landfill on the outside of the city, uh, burning trash, and, and, and so, so on. You don't really get to see this. In fact, just uh, Amna is here, and she was talking about this landfill, and as I have never seen it, you don't get to see and feel and experience any kind of pollution, whether it's air or water or other envir environmental issues on a regular basis. But air pollution is something that you're affected by every single day. 
So if Pakistan starts to clean up its act by recognizing air pollution, a lot of issues in the city and in the country start to get uh, cleaned up. How bad is it exactly? We have uh, 135,000 deaths attributed to air pollution every year. Do you know how many people died from acts of uh, terrorism in Pakistan? How many? 63,000 63, exactly. And in how many years was that? 17 so far. Exactly. In 17 years, 63,000 people, 63, people have died. So we have twice as many people dying every year from air pollution in Pakistan. So it, it's kind of an unrecognized um, problem. So it also has a big economic impact. So calculations are, these are not my estimates, your estimates done from uh, scientists that 5.88% of our GDP is lost thanks to air pollution. So of course, uh, how this is calculated is based on uh, reduced life expectancy, increased health cost, uh, lower productivity, and of course, um, the part that's not mentioned here is the personal effect uh, on your life. Like so many people in Lahore were complaining about uh, how their elderly are having uh, breathing issues. They have to be taken to the hospital. Uh, kids are also struggling, especially kids who are asthmatic. Those are only the immediate problems that we are looking at, that you know, we, we can see. But there's also a lot of long-term issues, like I mentioned the beginning, cardiovascular issues, cancer. So, uh, it, uh, some people are even saying there's genetic issues that can lead up from uh, air pollution because, like I showed you over here, there's a lot of uh, dirty stuff in there. Here's what you can do because that's what people ask. There's a lot you can do, but here's what you can start with. Uh, you can start informing yourself. Th this I'd actually written uh, for Lahore where it's much more critical. So. Uh, you don't have to buy an air purifier, you don't have to wear a mask, but that is something that you could do on a bad day. Uh, but the most important thing is inform yourself. There's an app called Air Visual which, uh, where you can get a regular forecast on air quality. It's in real time so you can see the current air pollution around you. Um, on a bad day, yes, try to stay indoors. When you, well, the app will tell you it, alerts come up automatically and so forth. Um, if you have kids or elderly at home, they're especially susceptible to air quality issues, get them an air purifier um, for, for the night, like there should be one in their bedroom. But mo mostly we need awareness, so like talk to people, uh, write about it, uh, inform, educate, advocate, and one thing that we're doing is uh, fill the data gaps with air quality monitoring. And if you don't, things like this happen. I don't know why it's not full screen, but uh, do you remember the cricket match that happened uh, last year? I th think Sri Lanka was here, not sure. Some cricket match, yeah. So this is what it looked like. The air quality was pretty, pretty bad that day, or those, that week that it was happening. All of Lahore was shut down. I, uh, I think, no, I was in Lahore just a few days after this, but like most of the cars wouldn't, weren't on the, on the streets because half the streets were closed, there was big roadblocks everywhere. In spite of all of that, the air quality was so bad they could hardly play. Um, they went on to New Delhi from here, and over there they were throwing up on the cricket field. So again, air quality impacts your daily life. Uh, you don't see it, but it's out there as an invisible killer.